Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Let's Create Game Mechanics in the Unreal Engine. In this video, I recreate the stasis room from Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, this is the fourth in the series of Zelda mechanics as I work my way back through all of the runes from the Breath of the Wild game. To quickly break things down, for this mechanic I needed to create the visual stages for the stasis process, as once again the visuals are actually part of the core mechanic. I then implemented the unique stages of the stasis process to account for the searching, freezing, applying stored force, and then launching the stasis object. And then finally tidying things up with some particles and other visual elements. So I started off by retargeting the attack animations using the same Gideon character that I'd been using for the project from the start. This was a simple step and it immediately helped to emphasize the stasis force being applied to the object. After the attack montage was applied, I needed to spend a little bit of extra time to improve the look of the attack mechanic by implementing a brief pause in between the button presses just to stop the player being able to spam the melee and cancel out of the animation. And of course I was able to very quickly hook up the menu system and the option to toggle into the stasis component using the flexible communication system between the component classes and the menu that I've set up in the past. So this allowed me to move straight into creating the stasis specific classes and other assets. I prepared the stasis component and tested its implementation. And the last two things to add for the stasis assets were the stasis actor class and the three different materials to visualize the different states of the mechanic. I realized whilst trying to test the new stasis classes and line trace to activate them and swap the materials that there were two points making it difficult to play. The first was the camera angle which meant that the point of the line trace was actually going directly through the player's head. This was easily fixed by raising the camera spring arm which is now a little bit closer to the Zelda camera setup as well. The second issue was that without drawing debug line traces, even with the camera adjustment it was still hard to tell if you were pointing at the object you wanted to interact with. This is something that I'd actually acknowledged in the back of my mind during the previous mechanics. So it was finally time to take a look at implementing a simple crosshair and applying it to the point of the screen where the line trace function will cast what. To keep things as visually clean as possible, I've made this toggle on and off so that it will only be visible when you're in one of the rune states waiting to detect a valid object for the specific rune. This now makes it much easier to be certain that you're looking at and that you're cast to the object that you're trying to interact with. With it now being much easier to detect and interact with the rune objects, I started implementing the stasis states. So in the Breath of the Wild game, when you enter stasis and select an object, you completely freeze it. To achieve this effect, I've simply set the set simulate physics to be false and started a timer to reset this after five seconds. In the Breath of the Wild, I believe this is a 10 second duration, but for testing and visualizing the example, I find that five seconds works really well. I have exposed this variable though, so you can change the duration of the stasis to your liking when you download and try the project out. Next, when the stasis object is frozen, I then pass a message from the player class to the stasis object whenever melee is pressed via the stasis component. If and when a valid hit is detected, then inside of the stasis object, this will tally up the accumulated force and work out the direction that it will need to be launched when unfrozen. Initially, to avoid reinventing the wheel, I utilized the point damage function, which passes in a hit point and a direction as standard. And then the final part of the mechanic is to launch the object when the stasis duration is over. And I've done this by simply applying force in the stored direction multiplied by the accumulated force variable. With the basic feedback loop of that set up and ready to go, before moving on to the visuals, I went back through the full process to tidy things up and I actually ended up removing the point damage approach as this actually required passing in more information between the classes than is needed. And I found that implementing my own function for this ended up making more sense and it wasn't a big change so it was definitely worthwhile here. 
One other thing I needed to account for here is if the player was to deactivate the stasis ability mid stasis, this meant that the object would be left frozen. So for this, I've simply applied the accumulated force to the object if there is any, and then reset all stasis object materials back to default. With everything working in stable, the last thing was to refine the mechanic with some additional visual effects. I started by bringing some existing particle effects from various game jam entries that I've worked on in the past. I utilized a stylized impact effect to visualize where the stasis object has been hit. I've created a very simplified version of the chain lockdown particle from the Breath of the Wild with just some yellow bars extending from the center of the object to signal that the object has been frozen in place. And I've also used a similar particle effect as the impact particle with some altered colors and scaling to apply when the stasis object is unfrozen, signaling that small explosion that you get. And finally, I've altered an existing trail particle effect to attach to the stasis object as it takes off. The very final thing is that I returned back to when the stasis is accumulating the force, and I've added scaled and change the color of an arrow object every time that force is accumulated up to a certain value so that you get an idea of which direction the object is going to launch and with how much force you have tallied up. So this is the final result and for me it's definitely one of the most interesting mechanics in the game, especially from a visual point as well. As far as implementing it into this project, it's been great to see that a lot of the time that I've spent in the previous mechanic processes did pay off as I was able to get this rune component working immediately and dedicate all of my time to the specific mechanic implementation. And that includes everything from the menu system communicating with the component uh, which then communicates with the player as well. And remember, of course, that you can download the entire source of this project for free from the link in the description below. If you do try the project out, do leave a comment below and let me know what you think, and feel free to share any of your projects if you use any of the mechanics from my demos. If you do enjoy this content to help allow me to keep creating more projects like this, do consider showing your support over on Patreon. Even the $1 donations help are greatly appreciated and you gain access to the Patreon exclusive Discord as well. So if you want to get involved on the Discord channel, as well as seeing early updates on what's happening on the channel, then do consider showing your support over on Patreon. As ever though, links for the project will be in the description below, so do check that out. If you enjoy the videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That is greatly appreciated and really helps the channel. And to be kept up to date with notifications and updates on any of the latest videos on the channel, do be sure to click subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.